Hello, and thanks for tuning in, guys, uh, to this week's coaching newsletter. So we had a topic put in by one of you viewers that was how important is a putter fitting and what do you do in a putter fitting? So for prime example, I've got a great chance to show you whilst I'm at home and I've got some time on my hands. So putter fitting is massively important. You think it's one of the only clubs in your bag that you use on every hole. But 95% of golfers have never had a putter fitting. And 85 of normal golf professionals also have not had a putter fitting. So it's massively been overlooked, but these days now that we've got technology available to us, it's being more sought after and people are looking deeper into it. And there's a lot of changes that you can make to a putter. So I'm gonna give you a run through of a few of the things that we look into to get you putting at your best. So number one is length of a putter. So we're interested to know from the butt to the head, how long is the putter that you're using? And the importance of this is it has an effect on where your eyes are over the golf ball and over the putter head. And there's a certain gap of an area that we'd like to see your eyes fit over. Now we can influence that by the length of the putter that we give you. So if we gave you a putter that was 32 inches, it's gonna allow you to bend over the golf ball more and it could help us get our eyes more over the ball. If we're someone who's already into that position, we need to get you taller, we could give you a longer putter. Now putters, when you walk into a shop, generally you'll see about 34 inches and there now and then you'll see some 35 inches. But putters these days can be custom built for you and they can vary anywhere from 30 to 35, 36 inches. So you can go really long or you can go really short, has an influence on your eye position. So point number two that we'll look into is head design. Now you might have heard that you have blade putters and you have mallet putters. So a blade is something that looks like this. You'll see it's quite thin, it's quite square, square cut. Um, these are great putters. Uh, generally we see if you have faster greens, they give really good feedback and you can tell where you've struck it off the face. It can help you then judging distance control. We can move from there, we could look through to a mallet putter. You'll see these much bigger heads, sometimes can obviously go to a point but could be a bit more rounded. These putters are a lot more forgiving. Very stable if you hit off centre. Sounds silly on a putt, you think, oh, it's easy. But you'd be surprised how much people can miss the centre by, certainly when we're looking at longer putts. So if you're struggling, you might find that something like this actually can give you more forgiveness. We then have something that's sort of in between, and you have half mallet or half blade, or it's a smaller mallet shape. Now, the interesting thing with all these three designs is they're weighted very differently. So if we went back to the blade putter, you'll see if I was to balance it, you can see how the putter head sits, very slightly at an angle, very slight more weight in the toe than there is in the heel. If I was to jump that across then to a mallet putter, you can see how this one changes, face weighted. If anything, it works very slightly. There's more weight in the heel than there is in the toe on this style. And then we can go to the third shape, and this one is heavily toe weighted. So you see how much the weight in the toe hangs down from the heel. So these putters and the weight of them can have an influence on how you square the club face up coming into impact. Obviously a really important factor when we're looking at trying to start the ball online. Not to be overlooked and it's something that we look into measuring when we get you out onto the putting green. So once we've looked into the length of the putter to get your eyes into the right position and we've talked about the different head designs, we'll talk about the different designs of the neck of how the shaft goes into the putter head. So you'll see on this mallet putter, we have a gooseneck and it's got a very slight step in terms of the shaft, how it enters the head. And how these go in affect the lie angle. So this one, for instance, is really quite upright. If we moved across to the half mallet, we have very smooth straight line right into the heel. This allows the shaft to come out at a flatter angle. So for someone who likes to have their hands a little bit lower, this part of head is gonna sit more on the floor or flush to the floor and give the appearance that it's uh, a bit better suited to the eye if you like that sort of hand position. And then we have the blade, and you'll have seen this one. It's an L neck, has a step that goes this way, and then the shaft goes down. So this one's more of your traditional putter, uh, what we see a lot more on the shelf. So, but it's a very important factor because it can have an influence on actually how you align the putter head. So if you aim to the right or to the left bias can be done by the offset of what creates on the putter neck. We then come on to how your putter's made, where the weight is, and actually how much loft is on the putter face. So little known fact that putters have loft and they have varying amount of loft. 
and it's dependent on where you play and how you deliver your putter determines how much loft do you need on it. So it varies from about one degree up to six, seven degrees of loft. Uh, and this can be changed depending on how you deliver it. Now, ideally, we want the right amount of loft that gets the ball out of any hollow and can get the ball rolling end over end. TrackMan allows us to track how much of roll percentage and how much skid distance you have on a putter. I'll show you that in a moment. But where you play has a big influence on how much loft you'd need. So if you're playing somewhere where the greens are a little bit longer, the grass is longer, you'll need a little bit more loft to get the ball up and out and roll in end over end. Whereas if you played somewhere where the grass is really short, quite tight, um, and they play a bit quicker, you won't need as much loft. So this is a really important factor for us getting the ball rolling as quickly as we can and as smoothly as we can. Moving on after looking at loft, we look into actually the grip size and the grip style that you have on your putter. And there are a ton of options. I'm someone that has been through a lot of putters and tried a lot of different things before I realised that how important putter fitting was. Um, so in the past I've had one of these put on, you might have seen a super stroke grip. And they're a little bit thicker and what they have an influence on is the rate of closure of a putter face. So if we're looking at trying to slow it down, having a thicker grip can help that. Or if we prefer the feel of something more traditional and thinner, you can have a normal pistol grip. And these are something that we have in store that we can give you to try. So we can compare how do you deliver a putter face when you have a thicker grip compared to when we have something that's thinner on there. So it's all good and well knowing that there's a ton of options out there for your putters that you can look into different lengths, lies, head designs. But how do you work out what's the right one for you? So this is where we come in. And being really truthful, you can't look into it deep enough without having technology. So we're lucky enough at Peterfield Golf to have TrackMan and to have Vizio's pack. And this allows us to look a lot deeper into what do you do with a putter, how do you deliver it, and what do we need to do and put into your hands to make you a better putter. So where we start is we take a few head designs out there and we are going to try some mallets, we're going to try some blades after talking about what you think that you prefer and what you think that you would putt best with. And we have a laser. So we can put this laser onto the putter face and you'll see that it shines bright. And this then allows us to see where do you align the putter face to. So if we put a board behind the hole that we're aiming for and you're trying to get it central and we start to see that every time that you line up and we shine the light onto it, you've got a tendency to aim to the right hand side. There's changes that we can make to putters in terms of the loft that we have on and the head design that could influence your alignment to be more towards the target. So little fact, if you have a putter that doesn't have much loft on it, and we take the loft off, you're more inclined to aim to the right hand side. If we're then to add some loft, you're more inclined to aim to the left hand side. So just by looking at how the putter's set up, we can have a big influence on where you're gonna line the putt to. So it's a really important one that we're able to align our putter face up to where we want to start the ball, because if we can't start a ball online, we've got very little chance of holding putts. From there, we're interested to know how well does the ball come off the face. And TrackMan being a very clever bit of kit allows us to track the percentage of the putt that you've hit and how much of it does it roll perfectly true for and how much does the ball skid for. Now, our job is to try and get as little skid as we can and as much true roll as we can. We then know that the ball's going to stay online and we've got more chance of holding putts. And this can be influenced by where the center of gravity in the putter head is. It can be influenced by the putter insert and how they're making um, inserts that can grip the ball these days and get it rolling sooner. The weight of the putter head, all of these have an influence on how well does the ball come off the face. So you, you might come in saying, oh, I love the look of this putter, but if the ball's skidding for 50% of the journey, the chances are you're not going to putt very well with it when you get it to the golf course. So it's our job to try and find something that skids as little as possible and rolls as true as possible. So if you're interested to find more about how you putt and what you need in your hands to be a better putter, feel free, drop us an email, give us a shout. When we're back open, we'll happily take it out onto the putting green and show you the full experience. We look forward to seeing you soon and thanks for tuning in.